Steve, you hear a lot of things about fusion these mm -hmm. days. Now, there's a lot of great science that's been building up with fusion, you know, for how long have we been working on it? About 50 years at least. Right. Yeah. But the last decade has been actually showing some real progress. We mm -hmm. have di different variations of the reactors that they would that potentially could that could be used. We don't know which one is going to be it. But there's some misinformation out mm -hmm. there, too. So why don't you tell us about fusion and fusion reactors, and then we'll get to the misinformation. So, yeah, I mean, fusion power is like a great example simultaneously of the promise and the hype of new, you know, extreme technology, right? The idea is, you know, we get hydrogen, uh, some version of hydrogen, either deuterium or tritium, to fuse into helium, and that produces a lot of energy. That's, you know, the, where the sun gets its energy, right? The ultimate fusion of hydrogen into helium. And if we could get that to happen on Earth in a controlled and sustained way, that could pr provide massive amounts of clean energy, right? And so, yeah, that, it's, a, it's a great thing. So the idea is that um, it, the fuel is what are they using now for fuel? Well, it's mainly deuterium and tritium, so which they, is just heavy hydrogen. And they're, they're pulling off, they're taking the atoms apart basically with the heat. No, no, it's, that's fission. They're doing it the opposite. They're fusing them together to form And then more energy helium. is, heat energy is released. Yes. When that happens, and helium. And then they, they use a turbine to make electricity. Well, that would be the idea. It's like once you have, if you have something producing heat, then you can use that to boil water, to turn a tur make steam, turn a turbine, and make electricity. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be the idea, ultimate idea. Uh, so yeah, it's basically using the same process that happens at the core of the sun. Now the sun is able to squeeze hydrogen atoms together because of the, its gravity, right? It's so mm -hmm. massive that it could that, that gravity pushes down on the hydrogen, so it's squeezed together. You know, hydrogen atoms, you know, they're positively charged. They want to fly apart. Mm -hmm. So you have to overcome the repulsive, you know, energy of the of the of that of the electric charge with a, with a lot of energy pushing in. So how do we reproduce? The, the temperature and the pressure at the core of the sun on Earth, that's hard to do. That's why yeah. it's been such a tricky problem. And it has to be contained. It's got to be, con it's got to be contained and sustained and controlled. Yep. And you have to siphon off heat from it while it's sustaining itself. So um, there's two main ways that we've been doing it. There's, a, there's more than just two, but the two main ways that we've been doing it, one is called inertial confinement. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is one that it had was in the news in December of 2022 because they achieved what's called ignition, uh, which we'll get to in a second. But essentially, there this the this is the national ignition facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, right? So this facility uh, it has 192 very powerful lasers all focused in on this little container, like a centimeter size container, that. Um, has hydrogen in it. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that that energy that they pour down on that little container, the whole ROM, as they call it, causes it to implode. The, it implodes so quickly, the hydrogen basically can't get out of its own way. And it, it fuses, you know, it, it compacts together enough to fuse because it can't move quickly enough to expand out of the way of this implosion. So it makes, he, it makes helium and then gives off some heat. So it produces, yeah, so it produces heat energy. So the question is, you know, for the, the experiment that was conducted in December, did it produce enough energy to contribute to the fusion itself? That's the old, that's the ignition part. Mm -hmm. If the fusion energy is leading to more fusion, right? Um, and so what they calculate, they calculate the total amount of energy that came out of the fusion event, which is very brief, it's a tiny fraction of a second, versus the amount of energy that was put into that container. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if there's more energy out than in, they consider that they have achieved fusion. Right. So that's what they achieved in December of 2022. The, uh, the, they got 3.15 megajoules out of the fusion event, and the lasers put 2.05 megajoules in. Mm -hmm. So it's like 50% more energy came out than in. So yay, we have ignition. What a lot of mainstream reporting missed, however, is that it took 300 megajoules to fire up those lasers in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the whole system would have to be 100 times more efficient than it is just to break even. Yeah. And then, of course, you you need more than break even if you're if you're going to power the world off with this. You want a lot more energy out than you're putting in. Also, there's the fact that 
this was a very brief event that essentially destroyed the container mm -hmm. in the process. It's not really a sustainable, uh, you know, kind of process. The, the experiment was done to specifically try to ob obtain the quote unquote uh, ignition. Yes. It wasn't designed to be like, this is what we're going to use. That's going to, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. It's really, it is an experiment. It's an experiment in fusion. Mm -hmm. It's not really necessarily the design we would go with if we're trying to build a fusion power plant. Right. Now the other type of fusion is uh, magnetic confinement and this, they use like a, a kind of a twisted torus, like a donut shaped container that produces powerful magnetic fields. Now that, you know, because hydrogen ions, you know, are positively charged, not only does that keep them from sticking together, it also means that they can be manipulated with the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So you, you surround them with a magnetic field, you basically form a plasma of hydrogen ions. And then if you can get the density and temperature high enough so that they're moving fast enough and they're close enough together that some of them will smack into each other with enough energy to overcome their repulsion and they'll fuse, right? right. So same basic idea with the inertial confinement except it's using magnetic fields as the confinement. Um, and they have not achieved ignition yet with magnetic confinement, right. although they're getting close. Uh, the, now how they, if you're, if, now if, you, if all this is happening in a magnetic field, yeah. Um, it, heat, no problem, because heat could radiate yeah. through the magnetic yeah. field. But the helium is inside there. Mm -hmm. It's inside the magnetic field, and we'd need to get it out. If it, if this is yeah, happening continu continuously, yeah, right? So I, I don't know how they're going to do that. I've never heard anybody talk yeah, about that. Yeah, I don't that. know how sustainable it would be before you burn through your hydrogen and would have to like evacuate out you know, the helium and put in new hydrogen, whether it's right. deuterium or tritium or whatever. So... That's the, again the sustainability problem. It takes, it takes you six months to run an experiment that lasts for a fraction of a second. You know that's not a source of power, right? Yeah, that's, no, that's and, just and an again, experiment. Yeah, these these magnetic confinement facilities so far are really just doing experimentations in high energy plasma. That's really what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Fusion is yeah is part of it, but it's not really even necessarily like the the single goal. And again, they're not being designed as power plants. They're being designed designed as fusion and plasma experiments. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're still a long way away from that work and we need more powerful magnetic fields, right? Which means we need, you know, to improve our super magnet technology. And also they need to be more efficient because if you're spending more energy to fire up those magnets, then you're getting out of the fusion. Again, mm -hmm. it's, it's an energy sink, not an energy source. Right, right. Um, so we're in the same sort of situation where we need orders of magnitude, greater efficiency and everything in order for this to be like a, a power generator for the world. So that brings us to sort of the reporting about like especially the National Ignition Facility breakthrough that they had in December, which was a genuine breakthrough. I mean, ignition is a big deal. Um, but what does it really mean? Now, the most breathless reporting, which is still being circulated on social media, is like, this is a breakthrough. It produced more energy than it, than it, than it went into it. And maybe in a decade, you know, we're going to have fusion power. No, none of that is true. You know, they were a hundredfold off of producing more energy than, uh, than the whole system used mm -hmm. to make it happen. And... You know, we debate, we debate amongst ourselves, you know, how far off is workable fusion power from today? The joke has been it's 30 years away and it always will be. Yeah. And, you know, and that's been so far that's been true. I mean, if you go back even 60, 70 years, they were saying, yeah, 20, 30 years, we're going to have this licked. 30 years later, it's another 30 years, another 30 years. And now they're now they're saying it's going to be another 30 years. It's just always seems like that's how far we imagine it's going to take to, well, to it, fix these problems. I think what that means though, when they say 30 years, that is so far into it's, the future right. that it seems like, yeah, we could get, we could solve all these problems yeah. in 30 years. What, we'll it, cure it, cancer in 30 years, whatever. Right. We could do whatever we need to do in 30 years. It essentially yeah. means they don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then that's why that 30 years has been a, it's been a sliding, you know, projection for the last, you know, 50, 60 mm -hmm. years. So, but we are, objectively making progress. I mean, we have ignition, you know, where we didn't have that 50 years ago. Uh, we have way more powerful, you know, uh, super magnets now mm -hmm. than we had uh, 50, 60 years ago. The high temperature superconductors are making, you know, are, are making it possible. But we're not there yet. And things always take longer than they seem. Personally, I think 
the second half of this century, you know, definitely not the not the first half of the century. So that means 30 years is an absolute minimum. Mm -hmm. And I would not be surprised. We're not going to be around for this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were closer to 20, you know, 100 than 2000 when yeah. uh, even, you know, the second half of the second half of this century before we really have like, here's a power plant producing energy using fusion. There's so many technical engineering hurdles that we need to get over. And each one of those could take a decade to really to tweak and engineer and, and work out. And then just building the facility, once we actually know what we need to do, could take another 10, 20 years. It's just going to be a long time before there's going to be fusion power on the grid. I think it's going to be the end of the century at best. We might not even need it at that point. Yeah, that's another question. I think we will. I think it's always going to have a niche, you know, be, you know, but you have to think, all right, let's say it takes us to 2100, we'll be like have operational fusion power plants, or even if you think it's going to be before that. But by that time, what's solar energy going to be like and mm -hmm. wind turbines and battery technology and all the other technologies that we have, you know, geothermal, we're going to have deep geothermal plants that are going to be way more, you know, cost effective and efficient than, than fusion power. Um, but I do think that once we have fusion, it may not be the best source of energy when we first can make it happen. It may be like ridiculously expensive and, uh, and tricky to do. And we were better off, you know, doing something like geothermal. Um, but I think just as a scientific technological advance, it's critical for our civilization because, um, if we just keep iterating it and make it more efficient and better, even though it may not be the greatest thing at the time, eventually I think it will become perhaps the most important power source, you know, for mm -hmm. our civilization, especially when you go off earth. You know, yeah, I was you thinking a, on moon or moon Mars. settlement because like, yeah. most of the moon doesn't have light for half a month at a time. And mm -hmm. um, Mars, you know, that has a, a problem with dust storms and they only get half the light energy that we get here on Earth. And if you go out to like Jupiter, they're only getting 5% of the light energy we get here at Earth. So for spaceships, fusion will be critical. Mm -hmm. So I think fusion power will have its uses in the future. And so it's a worthwhile technology to develop. And then in terms of, you know, land use, it may be very efficient here on Earth in terms of being able to produce a lot of power in a, in a relatively small space. But, you know, it, it's, it's, it gets really hard to predict the, the economics of fusion power. Yeah. Uh, the, it's hard enough to predict the technology, um, it, except to say it's possible, we're making progress, it's probably going to take longer than anybody thinks at this point in time, you know, I think we're talking 50 plus years, to be honest with you. I think 30 even now is optimistic. The people who are saying in a decade is crazy time. Like, mm -hmm. There's no way in a decade we're going to be producing fusion power. It's just not going to happen. I mean, if we were 10 years away, we would be having ignition like no problem. It wouldn't yeah. be destroying itself. Yeah. We would we would know exactly how... 10 years away means we have a design of a plant that we know what to build. Right, yeah. exactly. That yeah, we know yeah. works and is sustainable and produces power, not just fusion, but power. And that's... We don't have that. You know, we're not even sure about the material. Like for the containment facility for a magnetic confinement, we're, we're still engineering better and better containments to handle the higher energy, the higher heat. Mm -hmm. You know, it, like we're... I know they're they're using beryllium because beryllium is a very strong material that can handle the radiation that's going to be pouring off. It's not just the heat; it's also the alpha particles and the protons mm -hmm. that are going to be streaming away from the fusion. We have to contain all that stuff, and it can't break down or become brittle. Yeah, and it can't cost a billion dollars to have it work for a month. You know, it's got to again the, the economics then don't make any sense. Yeah, it's yeah. got we got to be able to build something that's going to work for twenty or thirty years and produce more energy, you know, than the amount of, 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 of energy and resources and money that we put into it. It's got to be worthwhile. Uh, we're nowhere near that at this point in time. So it's a really exciting technology, but we have to be very realistic and humble about how much of an engineering challenge this really is. This really is a second half of this century kind of technology, maybe even next century technology. So it's essentially a generation away. It's a generation away, I think is a reasonable right. way to put it. Yeah, absolutely.